Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about this e-paper display clock. This clock will run for about a year on AAA batteries and it has a number of features including the current time, date, sunrise, sunset, moon phase, temperature, pressure, over time, and humidity. And the um, clock can either be in 12 or 24 hour format and these units can either be English or metric. So while building this clock, I took over an hour of raw footage, but I condensed it down into a short overview that kind of shows how I built it. So without further ado, let's get started. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, these are the output files for uh, CNC milling, or you can send them to a, a PCP manufacturer. But um, the ones we're going to look at are primarily the schematic. So let's take a look here. So here's the AT Mega 328P. Uh, main chip and you can see we use about two-thirds of the pins on it um, and it's just the raw chip it doesn't even have an oscillator I should say it does have an oscillator but it's not being clocked off its oscillator it's being clocked off its internal um, oscillator at 8 megahertz whereas these pins are being used for a 32 kilohertz oscillator and the reason we do that is because that allows the chip to sleep most of the time so this thing will trigger uh, once a second. It'll wake this guy up and it'll run just a little bit of code and then go back to sleep. And while it's sleeping, it uses only about a microamp of power. And <clears throat> the once a second that it wakes up, it usually does very little and then goes back to sleep. And then once a minute, it'll read the sensors and update the display. And once a day-ish, depending on your settings, it'll um, update the time with the GPS. So this is the PCB. Um, this one is designed to be either sent to a fab or you can cut it on your CNC machine or you could uh, chemical etch it if you'd like or you can just wire it up on a perf board because it's not too complicated. Here it is without the um, ground fill. Um, so yeah you see you got the chip there, you got uh, the GPS here, you got your capacitors, you got your switches your ISP header, your cable connector for the e-paper display, and your LED. Okay, so things are about wrapping up here. It looks like we're about 80% done or so. So you can see the progress on the machine. Looks like it did a pretty good job and uh, we just uh, vacuum that up and do a little bit of light sanding. One on ground here and one on power so to ground it's touching to power we're good so you can also check these if you want see that's that's fine that's fine oh that's not fine what's going on there Appears to be oh there's a little piece of uh, copper there okay that was just a little piece of um, stray copper that was sitting on the surface so there it goes and this is the main advantage of using a CNC machine over um, chemical processes it is with a chemical process, you still need to draw all these holes. And the CNC machine makes it really quick and convenient. So another thing I decided to do was take the KeyCAD, um, the silk screen and other layers, and export, plot them basically as SVG, and then import them into Inkscape and print them. We got the board populated now. Um, of course, the plug-in things aren't plugged in yet, but I tested um, everything that I could easily get to with the multimeter, and so far, so good. I already discovered one hardware layout bug. Basically, these switches um, are rotated 90 degrees from what they should be, so I had to bend the pins and stuff to get them in. So, that is a 
bonus for doing the prototypes on the CNC is if I would have ordered these boards, I would have gotten, who knows, three, six, whatever, and they all would have had that problem. But now this will be the only board ever that has this problem because I can fix it. Um, and if I run into other problems, I can fix those too. So there's the front, and then that's what the back looks like. All right, so there it is running off my power supply. I just plugged it in, and everything appears to be working the way it should. Right now it's trying to get a GPS lock, um, but it already has the time set correctly. So now we're measuring. We got a lock, and we're measuring through a current meter so we can see that we're taking um, in the high 50s, low 60s microamps. So we're well on track with our power, and things are basically working the way they should be. I'm presently working on the layout code. So as you can see, it's coming along a little bit. I got a separator line and some different font size going. Um, so I did a mock-up here of what I want it to look like. Sort of. So that's kind of the pattern I'm going for. Here's a look at the almost completed UI. It's got a couple of bugs, but uh, those are actually fixed in the source. I just haven't uploaded the latest source. I used OpenSCAD, which is a programming language uh, rendering. It's it's CAD, but it looks like code, basically. Um, so we can start. Actually, I'll just open SCAD. Okay. And move this over and look at it. So there's the base of the case. So I'll turn on different parts here. So to start, uh, the display goes here. We have it at kind of at an angle so that while you're sitting at your desk or whatever, it doesn't glare as much. Uh, this is where the battery holder goes. The schematic, or I should say the circuits go in there. And yeah, there's a little cover and then we put a faceplate on there. So let's turn on, first add in the parts. So you can see the battery case in there and you can see the board in there. That's what it would look like with the Adafruit. Uh, the one with the cheap GPS and the um, Nano look a little different, but the board is actually the exact same size. So moving on, let's add the display and the faceplate. So that's what it'll look like basically if you're sitting at your desk with all the stuff written here. And then we got the top cover. And for my final design, I made this out of wood, but at first I was thinking it'd be good to make this out of acrylic. And I did, but uh, family members didn't like it as much, so I switched it to wood. And I, I like the wood better as well. Started the print about uh, 20 minutes ago, and it's coming along pretty well. I decided to use supports um, just to the bed. I don't 100% know if they're necessary, but um, there are some overhanging parts near the top, and it, you know those wouldn't fail to the prints almost done. So I'd rather, if there's going to be a failure, I'd rather see it right away. The print is finished. It took five hours and 24 minutes at my layer height of 0.2, and looks good as far as I can tell. Hopefully, I got all the dimensions correct. We'll find out as I try to assemble it. Okay, I got everything put in the 3D case I printed, and I would say some things were a bit of a snug fit, but nothing was so tight that I wasn't able to get it in. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We'll just watch it for like a minute here, and then we'll I'll get to the uh, cleanup. Okay, the cut turned out good, but that was the easy part. Now comes the new parts, which is the chamfer, and finally the drill holes, which um, the two mistakes I can make there is drilling too deep 
or making the holes so big that um, the bolts can't catch. So try to avoid all those mistakes on my first try. We'll see. Okay, the chamfer's done. And I'd say it looks really good. It's definitely going to need a little bit of sanding, but that was expected. <laughs> Okay, I went ahead and sanded this faceplate, and then I put some stain and a few coats of lacquer on it, and I think it's ready to go. All right, the module is completed. I got the faceplate on and everything all put back together, so basically that's what it looks like. Pretty happy with how it turned out, and um, yeah, I'm just hoping that other people will also take interest in the project and maybe get some inspiration from this um, yeah I'd be happy to hear any feedback I have on the video things I went into too much detail or not enough detail and if you like these kind of projects uh, consider subscribing and I will keep working on things thank you and have a good day